Let's talk about MongoDB and the new .NET driver. MongoDB recently went through a unification of sorts across all of its different drivers. You can see on the left, we have C-sharp, Java, Node, Perl, PHP, Python, and on and on and on. There's a whole bunch more under the community supported drivers. Each one of these drivers came into existence by sort of organically growing out of its community. And that meant there was no real common API to the way the drivers worked. The Python driver looked fairly different than the .NET driver, which looks still fairly different than the Java driver. So in version two of all these drivers, MongoDB has come out with what they're considering something like a unified driver, where they don't look identical, but using the different drivers across the languages looks somewhat familiar, much more familiar than it used to. Why is this important? Well, that means if you want to use the latest c -sharp driver, you have to use a different API than the traditional one. The best way to learn about it is to just write some code and get started. So over here in Visual Studio, let's get started by adding a new Git reference. So we'll right click, Manage NuGet Packages, and here you see the Visual Studio 2015 NuGet Package dialog. So we'll just search for MongoDB. Here you can see we have the official .NET driver for MongoDB named MongoDB.Driver. And this one is the 2.0 onward. We also have the Mongo C Sharp driver, which is what's called the legacy driver. And we can go back and get the older style API 1.9.2 here. Why do we care about having this legacy one versus the new one? Well, the new one has this great new unified API, but the older one is currently the only one that supports Link. So we're kind of in this transition period. The MongoDB guys say when 2.1 comes out, we should have proper Link support, and then the legacy driver will just be more or less for legacy applications. So let's install this. Great, so we've successfully installed MongoDB driver. So we can now go write some code. Now to work with MongoDB, we just start talking to the uh, to the server and we start talking to a database. If the database exists, great. If it doesn't, that action of talking to it will create it. Then we start talking to what you would think of as tables, but in Mongo they're called collections. And again, either those exist and you just start working with the data there or they actually get dynamically created. Let's take a quick look at the database we'll be using. So we'll come over here and we'll just launch RoboMongo. It's an open source app that we can use to talk to MongoDB. And here we'll have this database called Bookstore. And in the Bookstore, we'll have books, publishers, and users. And you'll see that there's actually a lot of items in here. So if I do a count, you'll see there's 271,000 books. So I want to work with this books collection here. And let's go and look at it like this. So let's just take a prototypical one. Whoop. Stand still. Do it like this. So we'll take this. And what I need to do is represent some kind of object, some kind of class over here, like something like this. I need to define a class book that has the same properties as we have over here. So ID, ISBN, title, author, and so on. Now it turns out Visual Studio has some special tools that we can use here. So let's open up a text editor really quick. And we'll paste this code in here. Now it turns out MongoDB works with something called BSON, like a ex binary extension of JSON. So that means it has things that are not tr typically supported. So that means this object ID here, this ISO date, those things are not really part of what JSON knows about. These are extensions. So in order to use the Visual Studio tools, let me just convert these back to strings for a minute and then we'll fix this. One more to clean up. All right, if I copy this and go back to Visual Studio, we can come down here and we can say edit, paste special, paste JSON as classes. And look what we get. We have a root object. And of course, we know our root object is called book. And it has this ID, ISBN, and even determine that those were date times that could be parsed. How cool is that? And it found the sub objects called image URL and a rating, and it created those as well. Now we just have to go back and add convert these uh, few things that we had taken the object ID out of and put them back. Now in C-sharp, we can give this a better name. We can call it capital ID, and then it'll be transformed by the data layer. Okay, so now we have our books. Let's go and talk to the database and query these books. So we're going to start by creating a Mongo client. So I'll say var client equals new mongodb.driver.mongo client. Now you can see we can pass connection strings and so on. But if we just leave it alone, it'll talk to the local database on the default port. And let's go ahead and 
import this namespace. Now we also want a DB, a database. So we can go to the client and we can say get database and we'll give it the name. If we go back to RoboMongo, you'll see the name of the database is book store and it's case sensitive. So be very careful there. And then from the database, we can get the collection. So db.get collection. And we can give it a type here. This could just be a generic BSON document, but it can also be a book. So we'll call that book, I believe is what is named. Let's verify that in RoboMongo. Yes, the name of the collection is book. Excellent. Now we can start asking questions. Like, let's find a publisher that is in the bookstore. So here you can see I just randomly found a book. And this is its publisher, so I'm going to copy the value. And we'll create a object ID related to this. It will say var publisher ID, one of these, just like so. Now I can write a query. So I'll say var books. So let's go over here and find all the books by this publisher. So we can come over here and we can say find. And you can see if the actual result is to just do an individual operation on find, these are all async. However, we do have this other find that lets us operate on sort of a fluent interface. So we'll say find. We'd like to find all the books that go to the publisher ID is equal to this particular publisher that we pulled out. So that's great. Now we also want to take this and maybe we want to find just the first five. And maybe we want to, to turn this into a list or something like that. And we can do this with to list async. So when we call to list async, this is actually going to return a task. If we actually explicitly say the type here, this is going to be a task of the result. So we could either await it. However, static main void doesn't work so well with await. So what we're going to do instead of awaiting is we're going to come down here, we're going to say dot result. And that'll actually block. So because we're in a console app, we're kind of short circuiting the async bit. If this was a web app, we would just make our actions, our MVC action methods asynchronous as well and just await right there. It'd be perfect. So let's go ahead and print these out. Okay, so now we have a little loop. We're just going to loop over these and print out the titles. So let's review. Create a client. Use the client to get the database. Use the database to get the collection. And then once we have the collection, we can use this new find limit sort to list, etc. API on it. Remember, this is very asynchronous. And then we're just once we get the results by waiting, we're going to just print them out here. Excellent. So we have a couple of books here, Lying Awake, Memoirs of Geisha, Dark Lady, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Let's suppose we also want to sort. So I'll come here and say sort by, and sort by or sort by descending. Well, this will let us put a lambda expression here. So given a book, I want to sort by, let's say something that's very obvious to us, the title, so we can view it. So now if I run this, remember we were only limiting to this to five, but now we're limiting on the sorted results. We'll probably see different books. Perfect. 33 moments of happiness, 500 nations, a biographical dictionary of film, and so on. Perfectly sorted, gave us five asynchronously. It's beautiful. Okay, so this is how you run queries against MongoDB using the MongoDB driver for .NET version 2. Now, there's one other bit. Maybe we want to update this. And it turns out updating these uh, books is a little tricky. So we could take one book. Let's say var book equals books dot. Do a little link to objects to get an individual book. Let's not conflict the names here. And then let's just change the title. Now we'd like to call save. Looks like we still have a name conflict. It's all right. There we go. Now we'd like to call save. Now, so we come over to the collection and there's, there's no save. There is a replace. And there's an insert, but I, it's, it's challenging to make it both insert and replace. And these are asynchronous. So let me introduce a little method here that will make it easier. OK, I've copied and pasted a method that I've pre-written here, save async. Now notice, in order to write this, we're going to use the replace one async. And we need to write a little filter and then provide the full entity. And we're also saying upsert. So in case we're replacing an item that doesn't exist, it's also going to just insert it. 
This is exactly what we need, but you don't want to write this bit of yuckiness every time you want to save something. So we're going to use this little handy uh, extension method. However, in order for this to work, we need to define a little interface and put this constraint on our entities. I don't like it, but that's what it is. It's very simple. It just has an object ID called ID with a get, like so. We'll come down here and we'll say our book is one of these I identified things. Now everything should be working great. So we can come over here and we can go to our collection and say save async. I'll pass the first. Now we're calling this method and it's asynchronous. This is the end of our main method. Chances are it's going to just drop that result. So we need to wait for it to finish. Okay, let's run it a few more times and see what happens. We'll run it first. It's going to display our books. Then we're going to change one of the books with this block of code here, but we won't see the result until we run it a second time. The 33 Memoirs of Happiness. This is the first title. It should be changed in the database. If I run it again, let's see. Ta-da! Now we've updated this record sort of ORM style. So there you have it. Now you know how to use the new unified API for MongoDB. And if you're waiting for link, just hold out a little bit longer for version 2.1. And when it comes out, you should have proper link support in the new driver as well.